Hani Yomada everybody, this is the Vikstra. Today we're going to do a little bit of a specialist. We're going to take a look at what was once considered one of the hottest movie country on planet Earth, South Korea. A little bit cooled off these days, they still bring out a couple of really, really excellent movies, you know, every two or three years and making something that is so good that you basically have to include it on a top 10 list, which I intend to do today. So without any further ado, this is the top 10 best South Korean movies of all time. Hit the intro. The rules for this one is basically it has to be a South Korean production and the majority of the language that is spoken uh, has to be Korean. Now there will be a slight omit from this rule but if you have any problems I will refer to this picture of Toriano to show you exactly how many fucks I give about your opinion about that. So here we go. Number 10. R point. What happens when you combine supernatural horror movie and Vietnam War movies? You get our point. Anybody who has ever talked to me about horror movies knows that I absolutely loathe uh, supernatural horror movies. I hate them. This is a pretty big exception because this movie goes so big into you know the more psychological part of the things that the supernatural aspect of the of the thing kind of becomes a bit redundant and it becomes a little bit less of a horror movie and a bit more of a, of a psychological thriller and that helps this movie it's a really fascinating story and it is a really fascinating tale the you know there, there isn't any jump scares of, to talk about not in the traditional sense of the way in my opinion the movie is really, really suspenseful. It has a lot of, of a great atmosphere to it. It's a movie that most people probably never heard of, but I'd say go check it out if you like either of these genres and seeing them blend together and actually factually works. It's pretty astounding actually to see. It's a great movie. Number nine, The Handmaiden. This movie will demand a lot from you. It is essentially a love story, a costume drama, a psychological thriller, and a heist movie. Not the heist movie where you're supposed to you know, go in and steal jewelry you know, using wires and lasers and stuff like that. It's more of, of a con artist thing, like The Sting or something like that. But this movie is you know, shot in three separate uh, parts which basically tells the same story but from different perspectives and different angles and you're learning everything every time you see it. It's so complex, there are so many small little side plots and details and backstories to different characters which creates a tapestry of a very small set of characters that creates a very big story. It's a little bit more drama than, than thriller and parts of it is so weird and so out there that you kind of think, what the fuck am I watching? But it has one of the most satisfying endings I've ever seen and the chemistry between the, the leading actors are absolutely astounding. It's a difficult movie to watch sometimes and sometimes you have to do, oh god, oh god, oh god. And then you come to the twists. This movie has a couple of really, really big, big twists and you're, you're going, oh? at least a couple of times. I mean, not in, you know, like race or something like that, but uh, it is still a lot of very, very big, twisty stuff that uh, I live for. And I think it's a very, very fascinating, interesting and well-played movie. And The Handmaiden also pulls off the Herculean efforts to be probably one of the most sexual movies that has ever been made, but doesn't feel exploitive. I didn't know how they did it, but somehow they pulled it off. And I absolutely love the structure of the three stories because you're getting all the time, ooh, what did I miss? What did that mean? That meant that. Oh, jeez. If you love that sort of movies, The Handmaiden is definitely your go-to movie. Number eight, Tube. This is the greatest Die Hard movie that has ever been made that is not called Die Hard. It is essentially Die Hard on a subway train in South Korea and we have a lone hero in, out to save the day from a madman. Throw in a little bit of uh, you know, political conspiracy into the whole thing and baby, you got a stew going. It is fast paced, it is 
spectacular and the ending is absolutely stellar. It is one of these uh, movies where you're glad that this is a South Korean movie, not an American movie, because an American movie would never have pulled that uh, ending. They would have done with a safe ending, but they would went you know, to parts unknown and hoped for the best and they got the best. Tube might be a simple story, but it has enough little details and tweaks going that you actually think that, yeah, this movie is actually a little bit more than, you know, the, your usual, you know, die-hard rip-off. Number seven, old boy. Revenge is a dish best served by being, you know, incarcerated in a room for 20 years without any explanation, then being left out and then being told that I did it, but um, I'm not going to tell you why. You have to figure it out for yourself. That is exactly what this movie is about. It was a big, big, big uh, hit when it, when it came out and I actually managed to get a, an American remake, which I have seen and I'm, I'm unsure of whether it really, really sucks or if it is kind of okay. I, the jury is still out on that one. But Old Boy is a very complex, very, very smart movie that features some of the most gruesome sequences you've ever seen. It is a visceral, very, very hard-hitting revenge tale that is unlike anything I've ever seen. It is a movie that, um, that asks a lot of very, very tough questions and also has a weird, weird ending that I kind of like, but I can imagine people not being too happy about, but I really loved it. If you're up for a revenge tale of a little bit of the different kind, Old Boy is definitely your go-to sequence, and the whole sequence with the hammer is probably, you know, immortalized now when it comes to uh, the, the art of making continuation shots without, you know, cutting. It is absolutely magnificent. Even though, if you're gonna fight a bunch of people, hammers are not my go-to weapon. I would use a mach machete or a katana or a chainsaw or something like that, but Old Boy is a psychologically challenging movie, but it has enough of side plots and small little, you know, details going on and, and characters that um, helps it becoming basically immortalized. And also he eats a live squid in this one, so that's gonna, you know, stand for something. Number six, 2009, Lost Memories. This feels like a Netflix series that gets canceled after two seasons. Essentially it is, Japan won World War II and has taken over Korea. And we have a Korean cop and a Japanese cop that is fighting off the uh, resistance from uh, the Koreans that wants you know Korea to be a, its own country and uh, you know are you a, a cop or are you a Korean he could have said that but that's for bright um, it is a very very fascinating uh, cop movie it's a very fascinating detective story and the more emerged you get into the story, the more, and the more you get emerged into the society and the history of this alternative history thing is really, really great. Now, there will be said that one thing happened in this movie when we have around 45 minutes left of the movie, which will probably leave around half of the audience behind and the other half going, ooh. I was somewhere in the middle. I thought that it was... Um, probably necessary to, to, to achieve the ending they were going for, but um, I thought that they didn't need to do that. Doing that was kind of cool and was kind of unexpected. But it is still a very entertaining, very fast-paced, very action-orientated and uh, a cool cop movie. But uh, it also goes a bit overboard with its over-dramaticism. But anybody who knows me knows that I love movies that go all or go home. Some says that less is more, I say more is more. And more is especially more in this movie where they, you know, put out the choirs and the slow motion and all this great stuff that I have a very soft spot for. It is a weird dynamics between, with, with villains and, and heroes because in the end, we're really sympathizing with, with, with the villains and we're unsure if the, you know, the um, hero's choices will you know, be the right ones and stuff like that. Uh, but I think this is a really fascinating movie and I'm really happy that it was just a movie and not you know, a cancelled TV show or something like that. Number five, Parasite. The Academy Award winning movie from 
2019 is an absolute masterpiece. It is a weird combination of thriller, drama, comedy and you know absurdism. Uh, it's, it's difficult really to see where this one was going and I, I can understand that some people were a little bit you know taken away by the, by the violence and taken away by the, the ending which I think actually worked and in my opinion this is a really fascinating movie with, with lots of great, great characters and lots of unexpected moments and sequence that you kind of laugh at but then realizing oh geez that was kind of sad and terrible but I'm still laughing at it because it was so funny made. It is a movie where you're, you're on the edge of your seat one sequence and you're thinking what the fuck is going on now? There are you know great some social commentary into this one that is not you know too much on the nose and it is one of these tales where you, you're thinking you cannot do this in any other country probably as, as a movie. There are moments where the movie takes a little bit of a backseat to other stuff, but uh, they, they, they soon recover and will, will go on more fun things. Parasite is, 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 a fantastically, is a fantastically directed movie with great acting and especially fantastic editing. And uh, while most people probably has it as their favorite Korean movies, I have four that want to have a word with them about that. Because number four, Brotherhood of War two brothers in the Korean War. One is trying to help the other and uh, we're, we're getting to see the entirety of the, of the Korean War from many, many aspects and it is a marvelously spectacular movie. It is an epic movie. There are some cases where you know they're having these CGI animated you know airplanes that comes and you know to wreck some shit that looks pretty wonky but apart from that Almost everything is absolutely stunning in this movie. The visuals, the battle sequences, the acting is, fa is fantastic. The heart-wrenching finale is also magnificently amazing. And uh, we, we, have, we have these characters we really like and we have these fantastic little side moments and small little side plots. A lot of stuff we didn't know about, you know, the, the, the Korean War getting played up. And because the, the Korean War is usually about the American, you know, things that we get to see in, in American movies where they, you know, from time to time actually touch on the Korean War. But here we get to see everything with the Chinese interventions and, you know, the, the decisions they made and why we are where we are right now. It is a great history lesson. It is a great war movie. It is a great uh, character study and it has a fantastic character arc. Uh, what else can you say? This is probably one of the, my favorite war movies of all time. Number three, The Villainous. This is like a combination of Nikita, The Raid and John Wick. This is the type of movie that gains a lot from you know, multiple views because the first time you see it you're kind of confused at time to time. Is this a backflash or is this not a backflash? Because they're, they're, they're moving a little bit too fast between a present day and what happened previous especially with her husband who you know you know started all this stuff you know by being murdered which made her go on, on her you know mega rampage which this movie starts with which is the best pov shot i have ever seen in any type of movie it was so good that even the critics thought that this was fucking awesome i think that the if you want to see a really hard-hitting, bone-crunching, visceral and, you know, uh, violent action movie but that has a lot of soul, heart and great characters to it, this is a fantastic movie. The only reason this one isn't number one is because of its slightly lackluster ending which kind of just ends after a finale that is not as spectacular as the beginning of the movie. This, that's my only criticism of this movie. Otherwise, this is a fantastic, grim action movie with some dark humor into it, which I found kind of hilarious. And also that heart-wrenching sequence when she's, she's late back to her apartment. Jesus Christ. Oof, that was a rough one. Number two, Steel Rain. This is the greatest Netflix movie that has been made so far and I will not hear anybody say otherwise. This is an absolute stormer of a movie. So the conflict between North and South Korea is escalating because of a coup in North Korea. So we're following a multiple people that are trying to you know 
fix the situation and you know make sure that we don't have a, you know a, another Korean War or even an, another you know world conflict on our hands. It's like if you would take 13 days and inject you know the Tom Clancy book, The Sum of All Fears, and um, throw in a little bit of you know a spy movie, agent movie into this thing and you would basically end up with Steel Rain. It is a very very tense movie. It has a lot of spectacular action sequences. It has a lot of you know tension sequences that, that you don't know where, where they are going and it feels like this big epic hulking monster and yet it was just released on some random uh, streaming service. This should have been a big you know blockbuster on, in on, in the cinema stuff like that. I think people would have, would have gone to see this one if they would have released it in cinematically. I would have loved to see this in the cinemas. It would have looked so big and so powerful. This movie is all like tailor-made for me. I love conspiracy movies. I love you know big modern war movies that isn't you know butchered in the editing room. And I have a very soft spot for these kind of you know what what if you know this would happen? How would this and this react and stuff like that? I love this. I also love the fact that they didn't throw in some you know stupid sci-fi nonsense into this one let it played out like it you know could have potentially happened and um, this movie could also very very easily have been the top spot but there was one movie that came out 2008 and said head and shoulders above all of these things all of these movies are great all these movies are amazing there isn't a sub 80 rating movie on this list but there is one movie that just eviscerates all of them because number one the good the bad and the weird when was the last time you saw a truly great matinee adventure i'm going to tell you when that was that was 2008 when i saw the good the bad and the weird essentially the uh, Korean version of the good, the bad and the ugly because we're basically having the same story but it takes place in Manchuria, you know, during the Japanese occupation um, and um, we basically have our, our three characters that, you know, goes their merry ways to try to find a treasure but we also have a lot of other people that is after them. The Japanese army is after them, um, we have some a, a, a bunch of Mongolian warriors or whatever they're supposed to be and a bunch of you know bandits uh, because nobody, nobody really knows what the treasure is. We don't know but somebody knows and when it's revealed what it is I think that is so brilliant but the fun part of this movie it is the fucking villains and especially the weird. This guy is basically he's a fucking chameleon he can play anything and if you've ever seen a single Korean movie from, you know, between like 2000, 2012, big chances he will be, you know, one of the key players and he will probably be the best thing in the entire movie. He, this guy is so lucky all the time. Every time he does something, he always can seem to end up with, you know, both feet on the grounds and all his digits in, intact. He's kind of like Domino from uh, Deadpool 2, only, you know, uh, more believable uh, luck involved in this one. Is luck a superpower? Domino's might be, but uh, I would say that uh, his is more of a uh, semi superpower. But we're getting uh, sidetracked here. This is a fun, fantastically entertaining uh, action movie, an adventure movie. The finale in the end, where the big chase in the, in the desert, it is almost Mad Max Fury Road levels of awesomeness and I just love the, the character. I just love the small little side quest they go on. The, the entire thing with the, uh, with the, with the orphans that the, the weird goes on is fucking hilarious and the, and the idea of shoving sticks up people's asses gets an entirely new uh, meaning. This movie has so much joy to it. It's so much life to it. It just brims with, with colors and life and has these small little sequences that are so funny and has these small little comedic moments that makes you go, oh that was kind of funny. And we really like the characters and we really want them to succeed and we really hope that there is a treasure at the end of the, of, you know, the rainbow or it just might be you know, something stupid. We don't know. There is a twist in this movie that I didn't see coming, that probably nobody saw coming, that uh, 
I thought was maybe a little bit unnecessary. Maybe it, it was just adding a little bit of, of, a, of an unnecessary layer to the story, but in the end, it, it didn't mean as much as I uh, feared it was when it first was revealed to be, you know, the case. If you want to see what the adventure version of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly in Korean looked like, you definitely should check out The Good, The Bad and The Weird. It is an absolute masterpiece. So I'll see you next time from well, so-and-so reviewing well, such and such. Thank you for watching, thank you very much. Chup chul!